have to trust one another and look after one another. When Jeremy Corbyn became leader of the Labour Party in 2015, it gave new hope to the left here and across the world. I think people have had enough of the politics of celebrity, the politics of personality, the politics of abuse. The Labour Party offered hope to millions and half a million people joined, became Labour members biggest party in Europe on the left and a really exciting time. All over the country we're getting these huge gatherings of people. They're young, they're old, they're black, they're white, all ages, many outlooks, many people have never been involved in politics before. But for the establishment, the sudden rise of Corbyn was terrifying. For the establishment, uh, the election of Jeremy Corbyn was a, a threat. Our job was to try and make the world a better place during our life, that our children's generation would have a better standard of living and more opportunities than we had. Corbyn was anti-capitalist, anti-war, anti-nuclear weapons, a socialist even. Is there any moral basis whatsoever for holding and therefore being prepared to use a weapon of ultimate mass destruction? For some, just the idea of somebody like him in number 10 was a declaration of war. General Sir Nicholas Horton says he'd be concerned that Jeremy Corbyn wouldn't be prepared to press the nuclear button if he were Prime Minister. When you heard a general, a serving general, when Jeremy was first elected, going on the record saying that they will not tolerate a Corbyn-led Labour government cutting defence spending, uh, scrapping Trident or withdrawing from NATO. And he went on to say, and we'll use fair means or foul to stop that. The Tory press threw it all at Jeremy Corbyn. They tried smear after smear, but in the end, only one stuck. There, there is a big lie everywhere, and one of the big lies of our time is the lie of uh, uh, Labour Party being infested with anti-Semitism. They redefine anti-Semitism. They redefine it so that uh, if you are critical of Israel, that is by itself anti-Semitic. The anti-Semitism smear hurt Corbyn, but it didn't take him down. Why have we got tens of thousands of new people joining the Labour Party with an average age of 30? But soon, others in the party were accused. Key figures, high-value targets. He never went into the studio to talk about Hitler. Vanessa Feltz asked him about Hitler and he, he, he cited the Havara Agreement, which was an agreement between the Nazi regime and the uh, uh, German Zionists with a view to relocating the German Jews into Palestine. That's a matter of historical fact. And for that, he was accused of being a Nazi apologist by that thug, uh, John Mann. You're Nazi apologist. You're Nazi apologist. Read back in history. Read back in history. Who should have been suspended? Action should have been taken against him. Indeed, I think police action, frankly, it was it was an appalling assault that he engaged in. I mean, he didn't lay a hand on on Ken, but he wasn't far short of doing so. Very, very um, aggressive, hectoring um, assault that he waged against Ken, and uh, no action taken against him. When I saw what was said against Ken. 
uh, it made me it made me almost sick because this was probably the best representative anti-racist representative our party has ever reduced certainly in my lifetime and to be portrayed in that way was an absolute scandal but why attack these guys why didn't the left come out in a big way for them and who was behind it all nobody who has followed it reasonably closely nobody can fail to see that this was a concerted orchestrated campaign. Was it really an orchestrated campaign? And if it was, who was in the orchestra? Israel lobby groups were prime candidates, of course, but a documentary produced by Al Jazeera said even Israel itself was in on the act. One of Israel's main targets is the Labour Party. For the first time, its leader is a champion of Palestinian civil rights. They'd be very happy to see Jeremy Corbyn no longer leader of the Labour Party, for sure. It's a covert action that penetrates the heart of Britain's democracy. Can I give you some that suggest you take down? It is outrageous interference in British politics. It shouldn't be permitted. I saw Jackie Walker on Saturday and thought, you know what, I can take her. She's like five two and tiny. Most Labour MPs didn't need lobbying by anyone to have a crack at Corbyn. Leading the attack was his loyal deputy leader, Tom Watson. I promise to back our new leader 100%. I plan to do exactly that. And I ask you to do the same. I want to thank our Labour Party staff, who worked really hard. But if the MPs attacked Corbyn publicly, there were others working away behind the scenes. A leaked report showed that many of Labour's paid officials were doing all they could to secretly sabotage their own party's electoral efforts. In 2017, the bureaucracy of the Labour Party itself was infested with these depraved people who acted against the party. The emails that were linked demonstrated that people right at the top of the Labour Party and the, the senior officials at, in headquarters were actively working against Labour. Perhaps if not for this sabotage domestically in, inside the headquarters of the Labour Party, it could have even won the elections outright. So the Israel lobby, the Labour MPs and the Labour bureaucrats all pitched in against Corbyn. But there were other forces at work too ones which have been barely investigated, like the alt-right. And to all of our supporters and affiliates, I say this, whether you voted for me or not, I will represent you. I will listen to you, and I will bring our party together. My immediate reaction was disbelief. It was just off the wall that the person who had been leading the party, who in 2017 had produced one of the best results Labour had ever had, should be suspended from the party. The grounds given for his suspension led me not just to disbelief, but also to outrage, because he was alleged to have said that the problem of anti-Semitism had been exaggerated. Well, I'll tell you for nothing, the problem of anti-Semitism had been exaggerated. Corbyn's suspension triggered the purge of hundreds of party members. It was open season on anyone who dared to show support either for Corbyn or for the Palestinian cause. Now we're insisting that the withdrawal of the whip from a 
long-standing elected Labour Party Member of Parliament is absolutely unforgivable and anti-democratic. And we're also standing up for all those members who are now in waves being suspended for resisting the anti-democratic, increasingly authoritarian tendencies of the leadership. You cannot have paid officials of the party telling party members what they can debate. Ironically, many victims of Starmer's anti-Semitic purge were themselves Jewish, but this was no accident. There is a strong section of Jewish opinion on the left in the Labour Party which does not support the State of Israel, which stands four square behind Palestinian rights and is opposed to the way in which anti-Semitism has been de facto used to undermine criticism of Israel and to undermine the struggle for Palestinian rights. <laughs> In 2017, the supporters of Jeremy Corbyn came close to putting him in number 10. In 2019, Labour lost by a wide margin. What happened? What made the difference? Lots of things contributed, but the media was way, way up there. But with just months to go before the 2019 election, it was a TV programme that maybe hit Corbyn's Labour Party the hardest. Many British Jews once saw the Labour Party as their natural political home. No longer. Being a bystander who turns their head the other way is not an option. The time for action is now. They say they're being pushed out of Labour by a left-wing version of the world's oldest form of racism. The Labour leadership's only answer to the media attacks seemed to be to say sorry. It didn't work, and some of Jeremy's closest supporters felt let down. We kept thinking, um, oh, you know, Jeremy and John McDonnell, they will, they will see that they really need to stand up to this now. They will understand that this is not, these criticisms are not made in good faith. Even the so-called socialist campaign group in the Parliamentary Labour Party offered me no public solidarity, nothing, not a word. Um, the Labour Party expelled me um, because I support those who had been purged, wrongly purged, many good friends and comrades. Um, and uh, they, were, they were purged as part of Le uh, Starmer's determination to remove the left. You see, and every now and then, to, to, to show that we're a democracy, there's a change of government. The party changes. But it's so important from the, um, from the establishment's point of view that the alternative party won't change anything. And that's what Starmer is proving now to the... To the to those with power. I will go to work. Thank you, conference. Starmer looks determined to lead the Labour Party back to the days of Tony Blair. Soon, the right and the establishment hope it will be a return to business as usual. But will it? I want to pay tribute to Jeremy Corbyn, who led our party through some really difficult times, who energised our movement, and who's a friend as well as a colleague.